So, uh, just going to give a little overview of App Packer um, and, uh, and show you a couple of screens from, uh, from the application itself. Um, the application right now, for anybody who's interested at the end of this, you can go to appbacker.com and uh, request an invite code. Um, we're just beginning to uh, release a few of the codes. We'll have some applications um, that are actually available for sale um, uh, coming up very soon. So uh, please go ahead if you're interested in this um, and take a look. This first slide is just a, a screenshot from uh, Craigslist. And it's somebody, for those of you in the back, uh, saying that they're looking for 50% backer of an iPhone app. And the person says, I'm just looking for a financial backer of a new iPhone application. I forgot the exact amount that he was looking for, but it was something like $2,500. Um, and this is a, you know, there's a lot of conversation today about how cheap it is, um, how inexpensive it is to build applications. And it's, and it's inexpensive until you have to write the checks yourself. Um, and then it's not quite that cheap. And um, while somebody can be a coder, we have a great guy who's developing for us. Um, he can't do UI, he can't do the CSS, and you know, while we've had a lot of conversation around the idea of getting folks to do stuff for free, um, most of the people that I've worked with you know, will give you a little bit of room. Um, maybe they'll cut the cost for a little bit, but at some point they need to get paid. And so we were looking for a way that we could begin to actually um, extract value from the things that people are creating. These are the promotional um, uh, shots that we have on, on, the, um, on the site itself. And it starts with, it says, create, come up with a great idea for a great app. As soon as, soon as someone buys copies of your app, you get paid and you use funds to make, um, to make your app great. So this is a chance to explain a little bit about how the model works. Um, we call it um, a wholesale digital marketplace. It's kind of an interesting thing when you look at um, digital applications. Um, iPhone itself is something like a $2 billion industry. And yet, none of the basic infrastructure that exists around most uh, industries is there. I mean, financing, really the approach it would be to go um, to maybe to a VC and maybe to an angel. And it's a long, slow process. And most iPhone uh, app developers really don't need that much money. They need $10,000, they need $15,000, and maybe they need $20,000. They're not looking for a half a million dollars. And that really doesn't work um, with, the, um, with the venture model. And plus, the, the length of time that it takes to um, get money out of a, a venture is three, five, typically something like seven years. And the idea of inviting somebody to come in as a common stock investor early on, when there's going to be a lot of dilution by the, by the larger players if your app is successful, doesn't make for a harmonious relationship uh, down the road. So what we enable somebody to do is to put their application up onto AppBacker to sell wholesale copies. So somebody can come in and buy 1,000 uh, the Q numbers, let's say, 0 to 1,000. And they buy them each for um, 30 cents. We keep 5 cents, and 25 cents um, goes to the developer who's created the application. When the application eventually sells on the iTunes store, the, the wholesale purchaser um, gets her money back plus a 67% profit. Um, the developer who created the application gets another 15 cents. So the, uh, the, the developer has made a total of 40 cents um, on the application. 50 cents um, uh, goes to the purchaser, and we keep a total of 9 cents. 5 cents at the beginning and 4 cents at the end. So what we allow then is for friends and family um, who are excited by your application to buy copies at a wholesale rate, and buyers of your app earn a profit every time a copy of the app gets sold in the iTunes store. The thing is, when somebody becomes a purchaser of your application, they become a value-added marketer. Just to say that you can um, think about who you want to have purchase your application. If that person has uh, some credibility, some knowledge, some, uh, a, a Twitter base, whatever it is that you want to use to measure 
um, their, their ability to help sell applications of the retail store, you can allow, if you choose, only those people into your network, um, or you can choose to make it available um, to anyone. So here's the very simple model of how it flows. You come onto the uh, App Packer Marketplace, you pay a $25 a month um, recurring fee. Um, wholesale buyers purchase units of the application, and then money is immediately paid to the developer. So somebody buys your application at 1 o'clock, you have money at 101. The only time that doesn't happen is if you set a threshold. You can say that um, you don't want to sell any applications unless you sell at least $5,000 worth. And I should say you're capped at selling a total of $10,000 um, worth of your applications um, for any one application. Um, Apple pays the developer for the retail sales on iTunes Store. That money then flows into a bank account that we've assigned to you. It's a dedicated bank account. And then we distribute the funds using the PayPal um, API to the purchaser, giving him his money back and his profit, and to the developer, gets a, an incremental uh, 15 cents. Um, somebody was asking me before we started, and I'm sorry for this, the quality of the slide, whether you can sell when you have your application up and going. So there are basically two scenarios. Either you're in concept stage, which is pre-getting approved by Apple, or you're in a finished stage. Sometimes people ask, well, why would you want to sell an application in the finished stage of selling? Um, and I have a, a friend of mine, um, Steve Ekman, Zoli knows him, uh, who has created an application. Um, he's actually got very good traction. The free application sells quickly, quote unquote, sells quickly. He feels that if he put some more features into the paid application, um, that the paid application would sell well. But he doesn't have a smooth revenue flow. So, in the finish stage, um, the idea would be that you would be able to sell in bulk um, copies of your application. So the, the, in, the, in the retail stage, just since we're limited on time, I won't go through all of the details, but the, you're selling at a higher price um, initially. You're paying, um, you're, as the developer, you're collecting 40 cents rather than 25 cents. The, the wholesale purchaser is making a smaller profit. Um, for the application in the finish stage with the idea that there's, um, there's less risk. Some of the, the risk of getting approved by Apple um, has been taken um, off the table. So this is just um, a, a screenshot of how the application looks. You come in, you create, um, you create the application, you describe it, um, you indicate what your the potential, the um, expected retail price is, I should say, you can set the expected retail price at any amount. Um, when you're in the concept stage, we cap the, um, the amount that you can factor, to use that term, at 99 cents. And the reason for it is we don't want people coming in and setting their application for sale for 9.99 and then eventually selling it on the iTunes store for 99 cents and leaving um, an imbalance between the purchasers. Um, there, there may be some smoothing of that that we can do um, down the road. Um, and then you know, down here, you indicate um, indicates for the purchaser a little bit of information about the application, the number of buyers, and what number in the queue you're purchasing. Um, so somebody can see if unit one is available or unit thirty thousand. And the price is the same regardless of the number of application, what number in the queue you're in. Um, Probably at some point we'll smooth that out as well so that the later, um, the, the higher Q numbers sell for a lower price, but we didn't want to get um, too complicated um, at the beginning. So then the, the purchaser, when he comes, uh, sorry, the developer, when he, um, I'm sorry, the, uh, the purchaser um, then um, looks at the screen where he sees the, the minimum sale. In this case, the developer has indicated a, a minimum purchase amount. It's $300. All of those parameters are controlled by the developer. So the developer can say um, I, it, the, the minimum sale has to be $10,000, um, and the minimum purchase has to be $2,000, and only these people who I put into my network are available to purchase. We tell people what the profit is once they sell the application. Um, and um, sorry, 
So after this, you get into the PayPal screen, and you're able to the purchaser is able to um, make their purchase. And you know, all of this is enabled through the PayPal APIs. Um, you can have a sale where you have a minimum amount. Um, that sale can go on for six, up to six months if the threshold isn't reached. Um, then, uh, then the the money which is being held is is released. Um, and on the background, because we have um, we take we have financial access rights to um, the developer's account, we're able to show the purchaser how many units have sold, um, so the purchaser can track the sales um, that are taking place. Um, just very quickly in the say this to investors who we talked to, there are 280 million apps were downloaded in December, generating more than $250 million in revenue. 30% of it goes to develop uh, to Apple and 70% to developers. I mean, putting aside the issue that the business we really want to be in is Apple's, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of money taking place. And if you think about it, there's a lot of value which is locked and held for a very long time. And, and our model is really simple. It's, it's, it's really basically, um, you know, people used to talk about disintermediation. We're introducing, reintroducing intermediation. It's reintermediation. Um, because the idea is that we can do two things. One, we can get a developer money right away. But the other is that as soon as somebody's made a purchase, they have a vested interest in your project. And they have an interest in driving um, traffic and sales. And what we hope is that as the model matures, um, that people will start making choices about who they want to buy their application. And rather than us going hat in hand to people saying, I've got a great idea, um, we're going to be in the position of choosing who we think the best buyers for our application. <coughs> the nice thing about this model, don't know yet whether it works or not, and what, how the market will respond to it, although we've had a good reaction um, from the Apple um, blogging community, the iPhone blogging community. The nice thing about this is the relationship is short and compact and to the point. If I buy 10,000 applications, as soon as that 10,000 application is sold, I'm done. And the purchaser has no uh, rights in terms of controlling the direction of the application. On the other hand, if the, the purchaser thinks it's an interesting application and wants to do more with it, um, to go in and, and buy uh, more queue numbers and uh, continue to profit. So you know, we developed this, um, started on uh, New Year's Eve, and uh, finished it up on uh, February 14th, and um, have it uh, in consideration uh, in the PayPal X Challenge. And uh, we'll, we'll find out next week how we did. Trevor, is the, is the typical usage where, as a purchaser, there's a particular application that I know of already, and I'm going to AppBacker to specifically look for that application to buy, or do I use your site as I, I, I know I want to get involved in an iPhone app, but I want to shop around and see what apps are out there and, and how they're doing, and can I use AppBacker for that? Um, there are two use cases, and you've identified um, both of them. Um, one of them is you have a group of you have a group of people that you know who you want to um, fund your application. This could be a couple of different kinds. One, the value-added marketers. You have some smart people who you think can drive traffic that are in your ecosystem. You want to bring them in as buyers. It could be friends and family, um, and it could also be people that you're working with. I mean, that UI person, that CSS person, could um, have an interest in purchasing applications as a way of um, earning a profit um, in, in the application. But in any case, the sort of the friends and family scenario, and the other is the discovery scenario, where somebody, I'm an architect, I look online, I see somebody's developed an application that's geared for architects, I think it's got potential, this is a chance for me to, to get in on it. So two questions. Number one, in physical goods, if I'm a, a wholesaler and I purchase the thing I, I would be terrified in this model is, of, of course, without without what's known as uh, you know uh, sort of minimum price guarantees, that the price of the product that I just bought is fluctuating all over the place, right? And AKA the retailer could take it, you know, basically say it's only worth ninety nine cents when it could be worth four ninety nine, but they need money that month. 
Yeah. So I guess the interesting question would be is why would I buy wholesale when I can't control pricing at all, which goes against physical goods? Yeah. And then we, really, if I can just tack the second question in. Sure. What about downstream in-app revenue? So for instance, I buy at 30 cents, but I find out the developer has put in uh, microtransactions and ads and is pulling off, uh, let's say, another buck or two a month. Do I have access to that revenue, or am I giving that up when I sign this agreement? Yeah. So to the first case, um, you're capped at 99 cents. So somebody, if you're in concept stage, um, you can't, you know, the, the developer can say that he's going to sell it for $9.99. Your, the price and your return is based only on 99 cents. Mm -hmm. There is that risk in the finish stage. Somebody could say that they're selling it for $4.99 4 and, and drop it down. Um, we don't have anything for the, uh, the revenue that you're describing that comes outside of this. And actually, I should say that we only allow you to make, uh, to earn the revenues from the purchases which are made within the United States. Apple has seven territories. We're limited right now to one. And the way Apple does it is they, they, they don't pay you until $150 comes in, and it just sort of gets complicated with the key numbers. Can I only invest in the application which is developed as a publisher, or can I come with my own ideas and money and approach somebody to make that happen? Uh, give me that scenario again. Can, can you just pitch the idea? Uh, without without selling any applicant, without selling. Well, I come with an idea and money and uh, try to set up a community of other guys, uh, crowdfunding uh, an app that a developer comes up and make it happen. Um, so so in that scenario, you would put the application up and um, you're saying make some purchases at the, at the same time. Right. He's saying he inspired the creation of the app by just pitching it on this, get the money, and then get developers to do it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Does, is there any background check, or what happens if they don't deliver? Yeah. So there, there are a couple things that we do. Um, you know, when I describe security, um, I would look at this initially um, as more like Craigslist, and maybe later, if we're successful, more like eBay. So, you know, I, I would use caution in who you purchase an application from. You might want to just purchase it from people that you know and use your own network as much as possible. That's the safest relationship. Um, I think there's a lot of data out there. We require somebody to put their LinkedIn profile, their um, Twitter profile. There is some information that you can get. Um, we're working with the head of security at Zynga who's doing some interesting things for us um, that I think can help with security. but. Um, there is a fraud risk, absolutely. So it probably makes the most sense to, um, you know, to purchase initially from people that you know, and that's really what we want to encourage to build our marketplace. So what do you know about the product before you, before you purchase it? Yeah. Is it, in fact, with your other question, can it be an idea? Can it be a prototype? Does it have to be a product? Yeah. So um, the way that it works, we're buying it. It's a concept until it's approved by, app, uh, by Apple. So um, up until that point, what you know about it is whatever the seller wants to tell you about it. So he can show you screenshots. He can direct you to a website. Um, he can give you as much information as you want. There's an opportunity to um, engage with the, um, with the developer and you know, have, a, have a dialogue about it. But you'll safe, you'll safely back the investors out of it if it never clears concept things. So the way that it works is, um, I learned a lot about law over the last little bit. You have an absolute obligation to submit it to the iTunes store. Once it's once you've submitted it, if you're rejected, you have you are on a best efforts basis to get it approved. So if you don't create the application that you said you did and submit it. Um, I would have a claim, if you're the developer, against you. Um, and you're obligated to pay the money back plus a profit. If I've submitted it to the iTunes store and I get rejected, then it's a best efforts basis and it's a little bit, a little bit hazy. I'm going to do the two questions and then we're going to get on to lunch. Trevor, is it limited only to Apple applications? Yeah. For right now it is and, you know, we're going to see if we, this is the easiest one to do. Because it's one, you have to sell, if you make an iPhone app, you have to sell it through Apple. There's no workaround, so the Q number is really straight um, and simple. And, and eventually, if it works, we'll, we'll begin to look at some other markets.
I've seen a lot of scenarios where this approach would be really effective, and I think uh, what the developer really, their motivation to really follow through is going to be their reputation. Right. Uh, because, I mean, if they've got a worldwide reputation, they don't want to tarnish that. Right. My question was going to be, uh, are you guys doing anything for just general PC game development? But it was already asked. Yeah, and and we're very interested. I think there are a lot of other markets that you know that are out there. Games is definitely one of them. I mean, we've thought about you know books and music. Um, we're we're really into developers because they're quick, they're creative, and um, I think they have, they have the ideas that are powering the world. But it, it's definitely a lot more than what we so thank you very much. Um, this is going to be my last thank you. Um, but really, first of all, I really appreciate you coming, and I appreciate listening to um, a little bit about App Backer. It's a nice thing about putting together a conference. You can sponsor it and get a session. Um, so um, I, I, I do appreciate it. The, I, we're very interested. I, I, if anybody is at all interested in this, please do go to App Backer. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter at hashtag App Backer. Um, and um, you know, we'd love to keep you informed. This part of is where we want to try and collect some information from you and um, get your ideas from what you've heard um, and, and hopefully put them to use so that we can report back to you with some new ideas. Might be um, improvements on something that you've seen in AppBack or something um, that would make AppBack or applicable to you or something completely different. And uh, Robert Clegg, uh, who's a colleague of mine who incidentally I met at a, at a conference that we did right here on this campus um, about social financing, is going to run you through for the next 30 minutes. Thanks. So what you saw is our opening application, our open, our initial entry into the market, which uh, I don't know if it, how clear it was that you, you digested it today gives a community an opportunity <laughs>